we tried to, you know, get some stage points, get some track position. It worked out for us last time. Uh, yeah, you see the 20 just ran over us there. He's he's gotten me a couple times now, so uh, he'll have one coming at, at some point. You know, when he's trying to make the playoffs. So we'll uh, we'll go get him next week at uh, at Pocono and see if we can't bring a little bit better race car. That was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and his thoughts about Eric Jones after that accident. But after all that, though, it was a big points day for Eric yeah, Jones, yeah. who left 28 points above the cut line with six races left. I'm not sure 28 is going to make me sleep very well, but Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is 77 the other way. Yeah. You see him all the way down there in 20th. Uh, so before I get into the on-track stuff with Eric Jones and Ricky Stenhouse, 77 points is the 17 car looking at must win from here on out? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I don't I know think, if you can make up 77. I don't think you can make up 77. More than Not against race. the group that they're racing against. And let's, if we just go back the last two or three races, that group has done this. Wherever they all finish within three or four positions, you're not going to make 77 up unless one guy wins and the, everybody you're racing against are the, are the first three cars out. I like that word you use, group. And the reason yeah, I say that is we hear uh, Ricky Stenhouse talk about Eric Jones, but then yeah. say, well, he's done this before. Yeah. yeah. And. You know, when you look out the window and watch these races, it, it's remarkable how often the same drivers are running yeah. against each other in the same location. You know, whether it's for 5th, 10th, 15th, the 17 and the 20 end up being in that same location a lot. Obviously, Stenhouse feels he's been on the yeah. short end, and yeah. this was not an easy, gosh, that makes me hurt just hurt. seeing it. Yeah, it did. I mean, if, if they're around each other a lot in the next six races, Stevie, I mean, 77 points is must-win territory for Stenhouse Jr., but 28 points of the good isn't exactly safe <laughs> no. territory for Eric Jones. No. So uh, I don't think, I mean, Jones said to us after the race that, you know, bring it on, essentially, yeah. is what he yeah. said to Stenhouse. Uh, and he doesn't seem worried about potentially getting knocked yeah. out of the playoffs and a retribution revenge move here. But uh, certainly that's got to be on his mind. Yeah. As well as the 20 has been running, as well as Jones has been running lately, you could see him getting a win here in the next few races. You could see him getting in on points. But yeah. if Stenhouse is sort of looming there, that's got to make but, him but I look at, and, and I'll say this real quick. They, they run together. But when I watch see those two teams, I think of Stenhouse is overachieving mm -hmm. to be able to run with the yeah. 20. And the 20 car underachieving to be back there running with Stenhouse. Honestly, when we look at the two organizations, the 20 car should be up in the right. top five and top ten and should be solidly in. They have just had a terrible year luckwise. I will say, though, if I was a crew chief in today's world, this is where my spotter would have a busy week because yeah. I would say, listen, I want you to follow social media and all the headlines so you can tell me who's mad at who so we can at least try oh, to yeah. avoid some. Avoid and it. the reason yeah. I say that is because when we look at those playoff standings, we bring them up one more time. We talk about Stenhouse at minus 77 yeah. and Jones up there at plus 28, but Newman... Boyer, I don't care if you're a William Byron at 61. Right. You can't get caught up in somebody else's mess. Yeah. If it happens early, you get one or two points. I mean, yeah. situational awareness for these guys is big, not just for who you're racing around, but I mean, Chris Gale said it about Jones finishing third. Like, they called strategy based on the fact that Boyer was having trouble, Jimmy Johnson was having trouble. They knew the guys they were racing in points were falling back, and that allowed them to get a little more aggressive with the pit strategy. Points racing is an ugly yeah. word, but an effective word. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about my man Clint drops two spots and picks up ten position or ten points or yeah, seven, seven to ten points, point, seven like points, seven right? points. It's crazy the way this point system works. So your situation or the group that you're racing is when when Clint Boyer goes into this race, when when Clint or Newman or Jones or Johnson or Swart, when they go in, they need to know what each other is doing all day long. Their spotters need to know, their crew chiefs need to know. This guy's had trouble. I can do this. I'm going to stay out and gain these stage points. That's going to put me here. Whatever it may be, you've got to sacrifice the, the, the war to win some of these battles to get to the final place. Well, it's not just situational awareness. The other thing the drivers, the crew chiefs, and the spars need to know are the rules. Oh, yeah. And they came That's into, the they came into question with Eric Jones. He had a little bit of an issue with the commitment line late in the race. I think I committed. You did. Commit. Damn it. Just come, man. Damn it. Okay. Just calm down. You're all right. Yeah, just stop talking. We're fine here. Get your mind right. We're all good. Get your mind right. All right, so this caused a lot of controversy. Yeah. A lot of people started a different way. Let me just clear it up. Let me explain the rule. Now, I'm going to say this. I, I would love to say that. Is that all the you rules. cleared it up yesterday? Well, yes, like I did yesterday. I'm going to try okay. to do it again. Okay, let's do it. So please. when I was a crew chief, I had a lot me. on my plate. I maybe didn't know them all, but the commitment line is very simple. There's an orange box. To come to pit road, you must have all four tires below the orange box, yeah. like the 12 does, like the two in front of him does. You see Eric Jones, he turns right and splits the orange box. Yes. 
If all four tires are not below the orange box, you are free to go back to the racetrack penalty free. While it pa uh, fails the, the vision test, yes. it doesn't fail the rules, test. the rules test. The reason it's confusing is that until about a year or two ago, that would have been a penalty. Two years yes. ago. That, yes, years that, ago, that, that yeah. would have been a commitment. And that's why Eric Jones thought he had yes. screwed up. That's why yeah. the team yeah. initially but, but thought to like, NASCAR's in trouble. defense, the reason they changed, changed it, it. Yeah. is because it changed it every track. Right. Yeah, that's Where right, the right, Finally, right. they're like, okay, right. time out. Time out. This is too hard. This is the rule. So, so to be clear, if you have all four tires below and you go on the track, that's a yeah. penalty. If you don't have all four tires below and you come down pit road, that's a penalty. Yeah. Um, I saw a tweet you were mentioned in, though. You said, well, then, if that's kind of silly, why would guys just not do it all the time? Because the one other footnote, though, is you have to maintain your spot in line. Yeah. So if I'm a lead lap car and you're going to play that game, guess yeah. what I'm going to do? I'm going to accelerate and fill that gap. And yeah. you're not going to get back up in line. Back. You then see you that big gap that the 20 has right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If those other three or four cars, I can't quite tell who they are, they need to fill that gap. Yeah. If they're paying attention That's to fill negative. that gap, then, yeah. then your position is lost. But why not just throw Deeks more often? And, you know, if, if you're the, the, the leading car, why not just always fake? Why not well, drive over the, the pitman box? Here's why not. Because NASCAR would make a rule and you wouldn't be able to do That's it That's what anymore. Jones essentially yeah. said when I asked yeah. him yesterday. I was yeah. like, did you stumble into some sort of gamesmanship yeah. here where maybe you could just always drive over the commitment box? And he yeah. said, maybe, but NASCAR might not yeah, be too happy stupidity is never gamesmanship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a little harsh. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, but no, but listen. I don't like, listen, I'm fine with the rule. I don't like the gamesmanship because I don't even like the stupid code words they yeah. all use. Like, yeah. I, like like, let's try to keep this simple. I think they make it more complicated than they should. But to everyone's defense, it fails the eye test. Yes, it does. Even Steve does. O'Donnell and I had this conversation. He's like, look, it was it's clear cut. Here's the rules. I mean, I, I agree with you. Yeah. He goes, but I will admit, it looks odd. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And and there are like things like that in a lot because of sports. He, because it looks odd because he can turn right and he's safe. If right. he turned left, then it's a penalty. a penalty. Then it's yeah. a penalty. And that's why it looks odd because we've seen so many times somebody cut it and turn left and right. come down pit road. Now you're called on it. If you have a box and a boundary yes. and you're going over it, yes. it just it doesn't look. It yeah, seems like it should be one side or the other, the other side. Hey, motorsports fans! Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.